This is the Tempest Knives Pinion. And this is a prototype made by Kubi and designed by our good buddy Casey over there at Knives Fast, the Knives Fast channel. And this is his second design that has been uh, made into a real life creation, a real life prototype. And uh, we, we showed his other one, the Mach 51, that was his first, uh, a titanium and uh, M390, I believe. A uh, very unique and beautiful knife. We showed that on this channel. And this is his second uh, design. And uh, it's on pre-order right now. And I pre-ordered mine last Sunday. I got mine with uh, black micarta. I believe it's going to come in black G10, black micarta, and this Thunderhead Blue. That's TM. That's me. Uh, Thunderhead Blue uh, uh, gray, you know, this sort of grayish color that I love so much. Uh, I'm a goofball. I call it Thunderhead Blue because I think it sounds cool. Uh, so uh, all three are are going to be uh, hopefully fully funded. I mean, I think he's he's close to it, but man, get over there and uh, help this happen because I want my knife. I really, really like this knife, uh, the Pinion. It is a very unique looking and beautiful looking knife to me, but it's also just so such a great utility knife. It's got a great shaped blade. Here's the Tempest uh, logo in their sticker, by the way. That's what you're seeing right there on the blade. Uh, they have, uh, it has a really, really interestingly shaped, but usefully shaped blade. That's what I love about it is that it looks, it's the same, but different. It looks a little bit different, but it's got a, uh, a, a very useful uh, cutting edge and tip and blade shape. You know, this part up here is this, uh, makes it uh, look unique. It gives it the space for that opening hole, which works so well. Um, but then when you're down here, it's a traditional affair. You got a long straight with a bit of a curve here. Uh, some might call it a reverse tanto. I'm not sure. Oh, oh, um, I, I am sure what uh, KC calls this. He calls it his, uh, uh, wait, I saw it, I saw it, drop sheep. He calls this a drop sheep. And that that works. Uh, just as long as he doesn't call it a reverse tanto, I'm fine. Drop sheep is actually a good name. Uh, sheep's foot, but with a bit of, I, I might call it a clip sheep, because it's like a sh uh, sheep's foot with a little bit clipped off the front, in any case. Uh, I, like, I like his drop sheep, that's a great name. And, um, it's a very useful shaped blade, no matter what you call it. What I like about it is this, is that you have from here to here, like I said, that straight portion for long pushing cuts, say if you're cutting through cardboard, it's nice to have that straight. And then here you have just a little bit of belly up here so that, uh, I mean, okay, so I was talking about this the other night. Uh, let's look at something. Okay, let's look at a real extreme sort of sheep's foot in this beautiful Midnight Jack uh, by by Jack Wolf Knives. Sorry, there's some gunk on there. But you see how acutely that tip comes down and how straight the approach is. It's 100% straight. So it's a, it's a very forgiving, uh, unforgiving little area to be working with there. Uh, if you're very lightly cutting and scoring something, that's exactly what you want. But if you if you're cutting something and you might need to be applying a little bit more force, it's nice to have a little bit of that rounded belly right towards the tip. It, it still leaves that tip down low, so it's easy to do these kind of draw cuts, you know, using the tip. Um, but it's not coming at the end of a perfectly straight, straight line. So again, that, that little curve there gives you a little bit of forgiving room to, to work on this axis a little bit too. So I, I like that. I think, uh, I, I think if it were perfectly straight, uh, I just don't think it'd be as useful, uh, honestly. Uh, I like that tip. I like the shape of the blade in general. And I like how this opening vent, <clears throat> which is a term I'm using lately. Uh, I heard someone else use it. I like how this opening vent is shaped. Again, it looks a little bit like a canopy window or a car window, uh, you know, Casey of um, Tempest Knives and Knives Fast loves cars. He loves planes. His last 
design was called the Mach 51, kind of a, uh, um, oh, what do you call it? Tip of the hat to the, to the um, P51 Mustang, and also I guess the Mach, what is that? The Mach, that Mustang, I think. I don't know. Uh, I know it's something fast and it's a car. I just don't remember exactly what it is. Um, but yeah, I, I like the way Casey's other interests besides knives um, bleed into his work. Um, this blade itself looks a bit like a car. I mean, it looks like a, a sleek, forward moving, um, I don't know, vehicle or something. Very cool. Okay, the action on this is outstanding. Again, I mentioned this is a prototype. Here it's labeled OS 8. Uh, here I got a little gunk there. Uh, but this will be coming out in 14C28N. Kubi Knives is the OEM. And let's see, I have a couple of other uh, specs here. Uh, let's see, overall length is 7.75. Uh, blade length is a perfect 3.4 inches. Uh, let's see, blade stock is 3.2 millimeters. It's a drop sheep, uh, G10 or micarta, and slightly under average width here, which is nice. It's, a, it's an easy carry at 0.48 wide. You got the G10 backspacer and a weight of 3.7 ounces. This knife is very light and very luxe to me. I mean, it's an, it's more of a budget offering than the Mach 51, uh, which was all titanium and super steel, but it, it maintains a luxurious feel. The action is incredible, and you can access that, uh, you can open it by slow rolling with your thumb, you can thumb flick it, you can, you know, this is a fidgeter's dream to me because you've got a number of ways you can open it. I was being a smart ass and saying it was, it was also a flipper uh, if you want it to be, <laughs> but of course, uh, you know, it's not intended as such, but you can make it one good looking knife, man. So go, go to the, uh, Tempest. I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to sound like Spicoli there. Good looking knife, man, but it really is a good looking knife. I'm just staring at it through the viewfinder. I, I see it a little differently than I do with the naked eye. And it's beautiful how this G10 is contoured. Uh, it's so nice in the hand. Um, I like the wire clip. I'm generally not a huge wire clip fan. I think it works great on this knife. I think it works great on, I don't like it on metal knives, I gotta say. I like it on G10 and micarta. I think that's where my sticking point is with the, I don't like it on my Spidey Chef, you know what I mean? Um, but I like that there and I like the big bolt or single screw that holds it down. And I think he said you can, yeah, Lynch Spyderco replacement clips will fit there. So if you if you also don't like that wire clip and you want something more like, uh, do I have one around here? I don't. If you want something more like a Lynch clip, well, you can get one. They, they make them to fit the uh, Spyderco sized uh, wire clip there. Uh, not much hardware here, 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 here. And I love this. I love the nested liners. And you can see weight relief in the liners there. You can see those holes uh, borne out. But I really like this. For some reason, it's a very gratifying knife to unlock. And I'll have you know, and I don't know if this is gonna change. I don't think it is. I, I saw a list of changes, but there's no chamfer on this lock bar uh, release, but it's still, it. there's enough space here to get at it that it doesn't in any way hassle the the thumb whereas if you didn't give that nice generous access to this lock bar and you had no chamfer it would just be annoying uh, but this i don't know i just like the way it feels um call me crazy call me what you will there's the geometry it's a nice cutter it's a good cutter uh, I have, all that being said, uh, I have not cut much with it. I have cut string and paper. So I, you know, I am not the one to look for, for, uh, hard use, uh, hard use commentary and stuff like that. But, uh, for an EDC, I love this. And, uh, 
I love it so much I ordered it and I can't wait to get it. Uh, I, again, the black micarta. I'm gonna show this with a couple of knives for size comparison. There it is with the venerable PM2. Let's see, uh, let's put them right on the same line. A little bit shorter, but I don't know. I love the PM2 because I kind of feel, I love the PM2 the way I love, uh, the way I love Picasso. I mean, I have massive re respect for Picasso. I love uh, certain aspects of Picasso. But other aspects, I just love him because I love him, and he's a classic, and you kind of got to love him. Uh, that's kind of how I feel about about the PM2. Of course, uh, I'll never get rid of my PM2. I'd, if anything ever happened to it, I'd feel sad, and I know I'm always dishing on it, but um, yeah, there it is with the PM2. Okay, here it is with a three-incher. This is the RSK Mark I by Hogue just like a mini griptilian in terms of size. So it's kind of in between there a little bit, um, much closer to the <clears throat> PM2 though. But let me show you with a couple of other knives that this just evoked. Uh, first, and not because it's a Kubi, uh, this Kubi. Uh, and as I said, this Kubi is the OEM on this. Uh, but I was thinking of blade shapes kind of reminiscent of this. If I had a 940, I would put a 940 next to this even though I like this knife a hundred times better than the 940. I hear people gasping, clutching their pearls. <gasps> How could you say that about the 9? I just am not a huge fan uh, of the 940. But what I do like about it, this does better, in my opinion. Uh, so take that for what you will. I'm predisposed not to care too much for the, other, for the 940 anyway. Okay, so there it is with the Kubi. Uh, here it is with the Finch Cimarron. And kind of reminded me they're both they both have a slender feel Cimarron's very slender and the entire blade fits in there but I, I think they would I think that this would do a good job at what this was intended for this was intended for a uh, light backpacking knife something that has a decent length and uh, light enough but strong and uh, the one thing that this has going for it as a backpacking knife is the bright colors in case you drop it on the ground. But other than that, I see this as as a, a knife similar to this. It might end up in the same drawer when I get mine. Um, so that's the Finch Cimarron and the Kubi Vagrant. Here it is with the Penguin by QSP. A new addition to my... Uh, to my Emotional support knife staple. Stable. Here it is with the Senkut Bronte, kind of a similar size and a, well, I don't know. When I pulled it out, I was thinking it was a similar blade, but this is more of a Dow and this is more of a, well, we know that that is a, a sheep's clip. Uh, a, wait, what was it? <laughs> a drop sheep. Yes. Okay. And then one more. This the back street like I could see this knife filling the roles of all of these knives I've shown um, just a great everyday carry knife that you could bring into the woods with you uh, for for light tasks but you would bring it in the woods for you to have a capable knife for light tasks a light capable knife for light tasks with a great shape uh, for most utility cutting and also a great shape just for style and and cool factor. You know, that's kind of what I'm always looking at. I joke that I'm shallow and maybe it's not so much of a joke, but I do like how things look and that is a huge consideration. And to me, this is a, this is a knife that fires on all cylinders. Hey, you like the car reference? But because uh, it is uh, an extremely useful knife, it is an extremely light knife, easy to carry, comfortable in hand, ergonomic, uh, really good materials from a really good OEM, and does it all with style and good looks. And how do you beat that? You beat that with another knife uh, of the, from the same designer of, you know, a year later. That's how you beat it. So, uh, KC, beautiful job on this knife, and uh, can't wait to get mine. And uh, I know I'm, I'm it's not, uh, the pre-order is not over. So uh, I am I'm saying that as if it's a done deal. It is not a done deal yet. So be sure to go over to Tempest Knives, get on that pre-order and make sure I get my knife. <laughs> and if
everyone else gets theirs. Thanks very much, Casey, for entrusting this to me. And uh, I will see you all later.